Hello, Mela viewers. Uh, another of our interview uh, with the representative uh, of the Rafale company. This time we'll uh, focus on the anti tank guided missiles. Uh, with me is a great expert, Robbie Stark. Hello, sir. Hello. It's great to see you again. Yeah. Uh, could you brief us uh, how is the cooperation with Polish uh, PGZ MESCO and the Rafale is going on right now? So uh, it's well known that uh, uh, MESCO received another contract from MOD for Spike LR. And as for the previous contracts, we are working very closely with MESCO in the production of the missile. There will be, as we said, polonization that will be produced in Poland. Uh, one thing that is unique that in this specific program, this is now taking place, uh, the minimum smoke motor will be uh, produced uh, by MESCO and not by Rafael. And so this is a critical technology and I think a, a great appreciation from uh, Rafael about the capabilities of MESCO to do so. So we are speaking about uh, kind of a tiny upgrade to the Spike LR1 uh, because of the motor, but uh, still it's not a Spike LR2. What about the LR2s? So, so Spike LR2, the decision is the MOD decision. Uh, I can tell you that uh, MESCO and Rafael uh, in the previous uh, uh, years were in, in discussions about what is need to be done to uh, prepare the Polish uh, uh, industry in the MESCO, and not from the capabilities point of view because they have the capability, more from the infrastructure what is to need to be ready for the production of Spike LR2. And uh, we are going, uh, we are all the time in discussion what are the uh, uh, additional steps need to be taken by MESCO to do so. Uh, we are all waiting for MOD decision if Spike LR2. Uh, I think uh, it seems that the next contract that will be, it will be Spike LR2. Uh, we see uh, interest coming from different uh, aspects of training equipment and the uh, integration to uh, the turret that we understand that Spike LR2 will be the next uh, uh, phase for uh, uh, procurement of anti-tank yes. missiles. It's, it's a really interesting topic because the Polish remote control turret uh, is SW30. Uh, as you all know, it's certified with uh, Spike LR1 or Correct. Spike LR1 Plus. Uh, Correct. That's called. But what about the integration with LR2? So, uh, in principle, we're speaking at the same turret, so uh, the main efforts for integration was already done. Of course, there is some kind of a, a delta of integration needed to be taken once uh, the Spike LR2 and, uh, will be chosen. And uh, uh, it's mainly related to software issues and uh, uh, topics, uh, the, the launchers and the, uh, uh, the kit that is providing, supporting the Spike uh, uh, LR2. But there is some adjustment need to be taken by HSW and we're working together with them uh, to define what are again uh, uh, the delta that need to be taken uh, and also there is in some kind of implications uh, if we're moving from the Rosamak to the Borsuk but uh, this is mainly because of road tests because different vibration uh, dependent on the type of platform. But of course. And um, at the end I would like to ask you about the biggest uh, missile in the Spike family, Spike M loss, which Poland decided to um, buy 96 uh, Apache helicopters. Yes. So, uh, would you plan to offer um, the Spike and loss um, missiles, and is there any chance to polarization of the part of the production of the corporate Polish industry? Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, so, Spike and loss is not only offered uh, by Rafael to the Apache uh, helicopter, but also for the tank destroyer, the Otokab Joja, uh, that Rafael also uh, put a proposal for PGZ and MOD, uh, uh, offering this unique uh, uh, missile and full solution. Uh, of course, with a, a, a transfer of technology for production of the Spike Enlos uh, and the launchers in Poland, once if the decision will take and Rafael is, uh, is the, uh, has the right solution. About the Apache, so uh, yes, uh, it's, it's a great uh, uh, decision for us and I think that uh, Poland chose the Apache Echo as their new attack helicopter. And 
and it's no secret that currently the uh, the chosen weapon system is uh, the Hellfire and the Jagam. Uh, that uh, it seems that they are coming with a well-known uh, standoff of only up to eight kilometers. And as we see today, there is a need for real standoff and uh, spike and loss firing from airborne platforms can reach up to 50 kilometers, giving this, the survivability and the standoff required. Uh, we are working together. Uh, 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 with the industry trying to see how can we offer the, uh, the spike and loss and here again will be polonization not only on the missile but also on the integration part. What can I can add that we have a, a good a solid uh, uh, fact that the US Army Aviation chose the spike and loss to be integrated on their Apache Echo and it was already qualified as as was uh, discussed uh, and presented last year, but now it's getting to the uh, operational stage and soon you will have Apache squadrons with Spike Enos. This means that uh, we are also in contact with the uh, uh, Americans, that there is readiness also by the Americans to uh, uh, allow Polish uh, uh, MOD and the Polish user to integrate the Spike Enos. So this is like a discussion going uh, with the Polish MOD, uh, Air Force, uh, Armament Agency, and uh, us, and to see how can we uh, offer this solution that will be uh, the most logical for this kind of attack helicopter uh, and operate beyond line of sight at high standoff. Uh, so uh, this is just because it just was signed. It's only we are just starting the discussion with the relevant stakeholders in the Polish uh, environment. Okay. Thank you for the interview. Thank you.